Hello and welcome to Stotts Ross Maths video on Key Stage 5 Integrating Exponential and Trigonometric Functions and 1 over x. Now we'll start with trigonometric functions. You may remember from our differentiation videos that if you differentiate sine of x then it became cos of x and therefore consequently if you were to integrate cos of x then it would become sine of x plus c. And you may also remember I said that if you go the wrong way, then it negates it. So, for example, if we were to integrate sine of x, we're going the wrong way, and therefore that would become minus cos x. And if you were to differentiate cos of x, that's going the wrong way, and therefore that would become minus sine of x when you integrate it. And I'm going to gradually fill in these standard results here as we answer these various questions. So, let's do 1a. We want the integral of sine of x. Now, as I said, we're going the wrong way here because differentiating will give us cos of x, and because we're integrating, it negates it, so it becomes minus cos of x plus c. And I'm going to put that in my standard results here. However, if I was to integrate cos of x, that's going the right way, and therefore that becomes sine of x plus c. If I go to part b here, if I want to integrate cos of 2x, now, in general, whenever you have a linear function inside your function, by linear I just mean something x plus some constant, in this case plus zero, then whenever we integrate, we integrate this just as if we were integrating cos of x. So we know that cos of x becomes sine of x, so cos of 2x becomes sine of 2x. But you have to divide by whatever number is in front of the x in that inner linear function. So I divide by the 2. And that's because of something called the chain rule. If you were to differentiate sine of 2x, then differentiating the outer function gives you cos of 2x. But then when we times by the inner function differentiated, that times is by 2. Now we don't want that 2, and therefore we have to divide by 2 to compensate for that. What about c? If we integrate tan of x, now I'm not going to explain in this video why you get this, but this is just a standard result. You get ln of sec x plus c. And we can use something called integration by observation in order to prove that result. But let's for now just write it on our standard results. Now I've, ac now I've accidentally done 2a instead, done these in the wrong order. Let's go on to 1c. I want to integrate sec squared of 2x plus 1. Now you may be able to remember that when you differentiate tan of x, that gives you sec squared of x. And so the opposite therefore is when we integrate sec squared of x, it gets us to tan of x. So let's add that here. However, we've got this situation again where we've got some linear function as the inner function. So we've got this 2x plus 1, this linear expression. So therefore, when we integrate sec squared of 2x plus 1, it becomes tan of 2x plus 1. But remember, we have to divide by whatever number's in front of that x. So we're going to divide by that 2. And then d. Do you remember when we differentiate sec x, that gives us sec x tan x. And consequently, that means when you integrate sec x tan x, we would get back to sec x. So in this particular case, we're integrating sec of 3x tan of 3x. Now all that's happened is instead of x, I have 3x instead. So that's going to integrate to sec of 3x. And then again, because this inner function is 3x rather than x, I have to divide by that number in front of the x, like so, to get a third sec 3x plus c. Now for question 2, we've already done 2a. And then 2b, we want to integrate sec x. Now again, this is a standard result, and we get, and I believe it's in the formula booklet, ln of sec x plus tan x. Now we have to use integration by substitution for this. We would use the substitution u equals sec x plus tan x, which we explore in a different video. But for the moment, just accept this as a standard result, which I'm going to add here. So we get ln of sec x plus tan x plus c. Then we've got 2c, the integral of cot of x dx. 
Now it's very similar to the integral of tan of x. Here we got ln of sec x plus c, and here in fact we get ln of sine x plus c. And again, this uses a method called integration by inspection, which we explore in another video. So I'm going to add that to my standard result. So cot x here, it gives us ln of sine x plus c. And then 2d, we've got the integral of cosec x. Now I mentioned a trick with differentiation, is that if we co the thing we're differentiating, then we also co the result but negate it. So do you remember, for example, that if I differentiated tan of x, and that gave me sec squared x, if I differentiated cotan of x, so I coed it, I cot of x, then you also co the result and it also negates it. Now we've got a similar thing here. Notice this is cosec where there's a sec. So we in fact get ln of cosec x plus cotan, so cot x plus c, but we get this negation here. And again, that's a standard result. I'm going to add it here, and there should be a plus c, but I ran out of space. And that's the end of two. Now let's go on to three then. So these are the squared sine and cos functions. We want to integrate sine squared of x. Now for both sine squared and cos squared, what we do is we use the double angle formula for cos. Now thinking back to our double angle formula, do you remember there was uh, two cos squared x minus one, but we also had minus two sine squared x. So if we were to rearrange this to make sine squared x a subject, we could get this in terms of cos of 2x, which is easier to integrate than sine squared x. So if I just do something called the swapsy trick, I swap the thing I'm subtracting in the result, so we get 2 sine squared x equals 1 minus cos 2x, and then if we half both sides, we get sine squared x is equal to half minus half cos 2x. So now I want to integrate both sides, with respect to x. And when I integrate this, that becomes half x. And when I integrate this, the cos of 2x becomes sine 2x. But because of that 2 in front of the x, we know that we have to divide by that 2, so that becomes minus a quarter. So we get this, and I'm going to add it to our standard results. So we saw that sine squared x integrates to half x minus a quarter sine 2x plus c. You probably don't have to memorize that one, but you do need to memorize these double angle formulae for cos of 2x. Now we can do a very similar trick to find the integral of cos squared of x. We again use the double angle formula for cos of 2x. So we know that cos of 2x is 2 cos squared x minus 1. And again, we need to rearrange this to make cos squared x a subject so we can then integrate it. So I just add 1 and divide both sides by 2. So that becomes half cos 2x plus half is cos squared x. So now that enables us to integrate this cos squared x. So the integral of cos squared x is, and apologies for this, now we know that cos of 2x integrates to sine of 2x, but we have to divide by that 2 in front of the x, so that becomes a quarter. And then the half integrates to plus half x plus c. And again, I'm just going to add that to my standard results. So we've got the half x, and this time it's plus a quarter sine 2x. So it's very similar, except there's one change in sine here. So that's that one. And now we want the integral of tan squared of x. Now for this one we have to use another identity. Do you remember that 1 plus tan squared x is equivalent to sec squared of x? This is one of the key trig identities. And that means this tan squared x here can be written as sec squared x minus 1. So we want the integral of sec squared x minus 1. And when we integrate that, we know already that set squared x just becomes tan of x, and the minus 1 becomes minus x plus c. So I'm going to add that to my key results here. So tan squared x becomes tan of x minus x plus c.
Now there's a few others that are not on here that I do want to fill in. So how do we integrate coset squared of x? Now if you remember the integral of set squared x is equal to tan of x, we can use that co-trick again. If we co the thing we're integrating, we also co the result, so it becomes cotan, i.e. cot of x, but we have to negate it as well. So we get this result, which I'm going to write on here. And that means we can use this identity to find cot squared x, because we now know that the integral of cot squared x is the same as the integral of coset squared x minus 1. And that's going to become minus cot x, and the minus 1 becomes the minus x, and then we've obviously got the plus c. So let's write that in. We get minus cot x minus x plus c. So that completes all of the standard trigonometric results there. So you may want to pause this video at this point if you just want to absorb these particular results. But we've got this final question, this trig section here. We want to be able to integrate sine squared of 4x. Now we know for sine squared of x and cos squared of x we have to use the double angle formula. So let's think it's going to be the double angle formula for cos. Cos of what is going to get us this sine squared of 4x? Well, if you double that 4x, you're going to get cos of 8x. Now we know that cos of 2x gives 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. So notice that angle is double this angle. So similarly, we're going to have here, for cos of 8x, 1 minus 2 sine squared of, and this angle is halving, so that 8x gets halved to 4x. And again, we need to rearrange this. So if we use the swapsy trick, 2 sine squared of 4x is 1 minus cos 8x, and then half it, we get sine squared of 4x is half minus half cos 8x. And that means when we integrate this, we're going to get, we're going to get this integrated, half x minus, and then that half needs to be divided by the 8, so a 16th sine of 8x plus c. And that concludes all our trig questions there. Now we also need to be able to integrate uh, 1 over x. Now, if we were to integrate, say, something like 1 over x squared, we already have a strategy for this. We could just write the 1 over x squared as x to the minus 2. And what we'd usually do is we just add 1 to the power, and then we divide by that new power, so that becomes minus x to the minus 1. Now, the problem is, if I do the same with 1 over x, if I was to write that as x to the minus 1, I can't do this same kind of technique because when I add 1 to this power and it becomes 0, I can't then divide by 0. We're not allowed to divide by 0. But we get this special result when we integrate 1 over x of the natural log of x. And notice these modulus brackets, by the way. I'm not going to explain in this video why we get these, but it is important that whenever we do an integration of 1 over x, it's ln of the modulus of x. So let's add that to our standard results. We get ln of the modulus of x. And you don't need to know the proof by first principles of how to integrate 1 over x. Now, if we were to integrate 1 over ax plus b, very similarly to how we would say integrate cos of 2x, where we just integrate as if it was cos of x, but we keep that 2x there and then have to divide by that number from the x at the end, we've got a similar thing here. So we've got ln of whatever's here, but then, because we've got this number in front of the x, we have to divide by that number in front of the x to get that. And by the way, this trick only works if the inner function is a linear expression. It wouldn't work, for example, if I had 1 over, say, x squared plus 3. That's not going to give you ln of x squared plus 3, and then you divide by 2x or something like that. It doesn't work unless the inner function is a linear expression. So let's use that key result to answer these other questions here. For b, we've got the integral of 3 over x. Well, this could just be considered as the integral of 3 times 1 over x. So that just becomes 3 ln x. So if we scale the expression by this number 3, it just scales the integral as well. So that one's relatively easy. But if we had the integral of 1 over 2x plus 1, as per this result above, we just have ln of the 2x plus 1 but I have to divide by that number in front of the x of 2, so that becomes half ln 2x plus 1. And then this final ln 1 here, 
we've got the integral of 2 over 1 minus x dx. Again, it's just some constant over some linear expression. That's when we can have this ln type result. So it's going to be ln of whatever the bottom is, 1 minus x, it's an expression here. But we have to divide by whatever number is in front of the x. We have to divide by that minus 1 on front of the x. So that 2 there gets divided by the minus 1, so we get minus 2 ln 1 minus x plus c. Now finally, we need to know how to integrate exponential expressions. Now hopefully you remember from the differentiation videos that when you differentiate e to the x, you just get e to the x. Now equivalently, when we integrate e to the x, we just get e to the x. So I'm going to add that here. And that's the answer to 5a. But again, we can use this trick that when the inner expression, in this case the power, is a linear expression, we can divide by whatever number is in front of that x. So if we were to integrate e to the 3x plus 1, then when we integrate it, it just becomes e to the 3x plus 1, but we have to divide by the number in front of the x, so that becomes a third. Just like when we differentiate e to the 3x plus 1, we have to times by that 3 in front of the x. And then c, when we integrate 2e to the 5x, the 2 just stays on the front there, but we have to divide by that 5 in front of the x, so it becomes 2 fifths e to the 5x plus c. And finally, we want to integrate more general exponential functions. So this is when we have some other base, say 2 to the power of x. Now we explored in a differentiation video what happens when we differentiate a to the x. Do you remember that we have a to the x as before, but we multiply by ln of the base, so the natural log of whatever the base is. So for example, if we differentiated 2 to the x, it would become 2 to the x ln 2. So therefore, if we multiply by ln of a, when we differentiate, then when we integrate a to the x, we're going to divide by the ln of a. So that just becomes a to the x over ln a, with the plus c again. So that's a standard result. And I'm going to add that to my table here. So we get a to the x over ln a, and there would be a plus c on the end there. So let's use that for these final ones here. When we integrate 2 to the x, it just stays as 2 to the x, but we divide by ln of the base, so ln of 2. Not ln of x, ln of 2. And this very final question, when we integrate 2 times 3 to the 4x plus 1, we stick with the 3 to the 4x plus 1, but we have to divide by ln of the base. And because of this 4 in front of the x, we have to divide by the 4 as well. And we had this 2 on the front to start with, so that's going to be in the numerator. So we have this 2 here. And what we could do is to simplify by just dividing top and bottom by 2. So that's going to be 3 to the 4x plus 1 over 2 ln 3 plus c. And just to put these standard results again in front of you, here are all of them.